Yeah, so, um, hi. So, uh, my name is Alan Glickenhouse. Uh, I, I have to pay five for that uh, compliment. I'm going to use that with my management. So, uh, thank you very much. Um, so, I'm Alan Glickenhouse. I'm with IBM. I'm the digital transformation and API business strategist. Um, I have a great job. I, I get to go all over the place and talk to you all about what you're doing with APIs and share that information uh, as I go around and be with other people, right? So uh, this presentation is based on, on conversations that I have and what I've seen people doing and things like that. So um, so it's a lot of content. Um, I um, do these one-on-one uh, -on -one workshops. I do a lot of API days and other conferences. Um, and when I'm not doing that, I'm writing about it. So um, a way that I communicate to the world uh, what I'm seeing is through papers, blogs, videos, things like that. Um, these are the list of topics that I write about, and the numbers are the number of things that I've written in each one of those categories. And at the end of this presentation, which I will publish, um, are links to every one of them. So if you're having trouble sleeping at night, uh, I recommend this highly. Um, so it's a, it's a quite a long list of things. And today we're going to talk mostly about things that fit into the strategy, governance, and best practices area but we'll hit on a bunch of the other ones uh, a little bit as well. Um, so what's better than learning from your mistakes? And, and the answer is not, don't make mistakes. Uh, you, you know, we're all gonna make mistakes. Um, but if you can see what other people have done that works and what other people have done that don't work, then maybe we can avoid making the same mistakes that we've seen others do, and maybe we can learn something from the things that do work. So that, that's the purpose of this presentation. Uh, from an agenda perspective, what, what uh, I try to do in, in you know, trying to boil the ocean of everything that I see going on is, is kind of bring it down to a more containable number of things. And so I, I see patterns in what I'm seeing people do, and that relates to four common uh, business drivers uh, that I'm, I'm watching and, and seeing people focus on, and then seven use case categories. And uh, I've created uh, an identification methodology around those seven use cases uh, categories so that if you're thinking about what could I do in this area, here are the kind of questions that we can ask ourselves to come up with some, some good scenarios. So we'll talk about that quickly. All of this is going to be quick because we've got 25 minutes total to do all this stuff. And, and then I want to actually show some real customer examples. So I'll go into specifically what some customers have done, give you a kind of variation that relate back to the drivers and the use case categories. Um, then I'll, I'll do in one slide what I did in a 25 minute presentation in API is Amsterdam, the seven biggest mistakes companies make. Um, that will be a real run through fast there. And then we'll figure out, okay, so given all of what we've seen happening so far, where are we going after this? And uh, if I get through all that in the next probably 20 minutes now, uh, <laughs> uh, that will be a miracle. So, um, so that's that. So let's start with the four business drivers. Um, the first one that I see almost everybody focusing on is speed to market. Um, I'm an old guy, right? I've been in IT forever, and, uh, and from day one, the, the issue that I heard uh, coming to IT was the business wants something now, and IT says some large number of months later, and it, it's not acceptable, right? They don't want it. So we've tried over the last history of IT to speed up how fast IT works, right? We raise the level that they're working at, we try automation, we do all kinds of things with higher level programming languages, all kinds of things have happened over the decades. Uh, and still, the problem is I, business wants something and IT says some lesser number of months, but still not today, which is what the business is really asking for. When they come to you and they say, we want something, it's now. And, and now is never going to be a possibility for IT to deliver, because if you try to do something now on an everyday basis, eventually you're going to make a mistake. There's going to be an outage of security exposure, and banks and retailers and all these companies can't afford to be out of business when Christmas is around the corner, right? So, uh, so we can't have that. So the last couple of years, we've, uh, in the API space, been talking about two-speed IT, Gartner calls it bimodal IT, but the concept of being able to allow the business to do things at a more rapid pace and having IT have a, con a, a controlled rate of change on the IT side, and we do that through APIs. And so one of the big business drivers um, that I would not say the word API to a business person uh, and talk about is how they can achieve speed to market, right? So speed to market is, is the first business driver. The second thing that uh, I'm seeing companies try to get out of uh, API initiatives is getting more business, reaching more customers. So today, some customers out there are looking for what you offer. They you do a Google search. They 
wander into your store, however they find you, and you're getting to a set of customers. And then there's everybody else. And we would like to get more of everybody else to come find us, right? So how do we do that? We reach out to them through new market channels, uh, whether that's partnering, whether it's social media, it, it could be public uh, APIs, it could be IoT devices, there's a number of new technologies that we can bring to bear to increase our channel reach uh, in this space. And one of the, the most exciting uh, visits I had was with a, a big bank uh, many years ago that um, before they ever created their first API, they had everybody come in the room, business people, IT people, and they said, this is our channel to market for the next 10 years. This is not a technology that we're working on. This is our channel to market for the next 10 years. And I thought that was so insightful to think about this as a way to get more business for the bank and not just the next IT project that we're going to do. So reaching new customers, reaching new markets is, is the second business driver. So I mentioned there are four. I'm not gonna spend as much time on the last two. So we have speed uh, to market. We have reaching new customers, reaching new markets. Third one is innovation. Um, a lot of companies are trying to be innovative. They wanna come out with new things. And the challenge here is how do I do new things or try innovative things without it costing so much and taking so long? Right? I wanna be able to do this very fast. I wanna throw an idea out there, see if it works, and if it doesn't work, kill it quickly and not spend a lot of money and resources on it. And so that's something I'm seeing a lot of companies trying to do. Happy to have that discussion with you after um, the session. We're not gonna get into more detail on that. And the fourth one is something I call domains. It's, it's about sharing information across businesses. And this is, again, an age-old problem. Uh, businesses of any size tend to organize themselves in a certain way. They have multiple lines of business, they have geographies. However they've organized themselves, they separate the business into these siloed areas. And then the first complaint that they have is that the business is siloed, right? So how do I get benefits from having a combined business when I've siloed myself? And so can I share the appropriate information with the right visibility to the right audiences in my company. And so sharing assets across the company, whether it's lines of business or geographies, is the fourth business driver. Um, you could argue with me and say there are many more. Alan, you're stupid. You don't think of competitive pressure or making money, you know, monetization, right? And, and so <coughs> you can cut, create an endless list of these other business drivers that people are trying to accomplish, and I'll map them all into these four, right? Because if I need to make money, I do that by getting a market faster, I get more customers, or I you know, uh, if I, uh, I have a competitor that's out there doing something and they need to catch up, I beat the market, I innovate, you know, I do things like that, right? So, so we, can, we can have more if you want, but I kind of narrowed it down to four is the number I like, I can count that high. So, um, so that, that works for me. Uh, seven categories of use cases. So uh, there are four on this page, three on the next page. Um, it, it, it helps to get some idea of a category that you can think about what kind of projects might you do. And so in the cases that I'm gonna show you, maybe you will see many of these scenarios in here. So mobile, uh, not just mobile, but web UI, any kind of user interface type thing that we're gonna have a user interface that we give to our customers or to our employees, to some audience. Uh, and underneath that, there are some questions which I'm not gonna have time to get into today, but these are mm -hmm. the leading questions that we would, I would ask myself, that you should ask yourself, to kind of guide the type of APIs that you might come up with in that area. Social media, data and analytics, uh, again, data kind of fits into the um, sharing assets across the company, but also a monetization example where I'm gonna sell my data to somebody else. Uh, other, a wonderful name for a category, um, is regulatory requirements like PSD2 here in Europe or, or other ones that are happening around the world, uh, but also industry standards, auditing, security, things like that. You'll notice these four all say the word internal in front of them. Typically this means that the audience for the APIs are your own employees. It doesn't always have to be, but that's, that's often the case. Next page, partnering. Uh, typically starting with partner onboarding, but then uh, uh, with your existing partners, but then partner onboarding, public uh, APIs, and then device IoT type things. And, and again, leading questions here in this area as well. So um, I'll have all the links at the end of the presentation, but uh, it, some of the slides I'll have some pulled out here at the bottom. So this is a, a, a link to more business drivers and seven use case categories, and I go through all of these in uh, 
more detail the time that I have to actually spend um, on the topics. So, um, so I'm happy to have these conversations with you here this week um, or afterwards if you like. All right, so quick run through those. How are we doing on time? About 15 more minutes? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some customers. Um, Walmart, you probably have heard of them. Um, so basic API exam, right? It's creating APIs for internal developers who are working on their website and mobile app. But the difference and the value that they got from this is tremendous. They took access for these UI developers from five days to 10 seconds. And, and they've created their own video, uh, which you can click on this link and, and get out there and then they'll talk about what they've done with this. So just a tremendous value to be able to make modifications on their UI extremely uh, quickly with this. Uh, so basic example, speed to market. You see in the corner I listed one of the uh, the business drivers they're focusing on is a, a great example. Uh, in Europe here, Rikerson Bank, many banks have been uh, you know, one of the leading areas for uh, APIs because of the PSD2 regulatory requirements. But Rikerson Bank has gone beyond that. So they're, they're in Austria, uh, and they decided to go full out API uh, and not just focus on creating APIs for PSD2, but go beyond that. So they're using this in what they call an elevator lab, uh, increasing um, all the, the speed to market, but also uh, reaching new customers and reaching new markets. And one of the big innovative, I should have put innovation here too, innovative things they've done is basically offer online banking in other countries by putting themselves on the cloud in those countries. So they have a physical presence in Austria, but because of regulatory requirements in many countries where data can't leave the country or the region, uh, they're able to be in that region and offer banking solutions in that and extend all of that with APIs for themselves. So great uh, reach use case um, by Rikerson Bank. This is a, a, an interesting one. So there's a Nordic Bank um, had fantastic mobile app, 90% uh, uh, of the mobile market penetration in the, in the country. They created a payment API, uh, which was less expensive uh, than regular payment mechanisms like charge cards for the retailers. So they offered uh, these APIs through their mobile app to their customers, and a lot of merchants loved this payment mechanism. So it really was great because it saved, uh, made more money for the merchants to use this. And so then they went into business and you let other banks use their payment API. So this has become kind of an ecosystem marketplace type scenario where they've extended their business to their competitors and their competitors are using their services as a payment mechanism because it's so popular with the population. So almost forced their way in there. Um, this is an Indian bank. Um, so many, uh, uh, it's not, not a big bank, it's one of the mid-sized kind of banks in India. It's uh, uh, one that picked a certain niche to go after. And so what they wanted to do was go after Indian citizens that are working in other countries. And so, Many Indian citizens are working elsewhere and they have family at home and they want to do banking between where they're living and working and where, where they are at home. And so they looked at, um, at, at a way to partner out there with other uh, uh, companies and <coughs> banks in different uh, locations to allow for the Indian citizens to bank like they're at home. And so it was a, another reach kind of scenario. Uh, this is a marketplace scenario. So uh, we had a couple of sessions today and, and in many of the conferences on marketplaces and ecosystems and some of the topics that I've been doing a lot of talking about. And this one is a great one. Um, it's a commercial banking example. So the bank has a, a corporate customer um, and they have a trust relationship. This is uh, often a very tight relationship between a corporate customer and the corporate bank. Um, but the, the, the bank, the, the company, the corporate customer, needs more than just what banks do. They need shipping, um, they, they may need payroll, they need you know, whatever other kinds of financial products or non-financial products. And so what the bank did was say they wanted to create a marketplace and they validated and vetted these different businesses. And so one of the things that I've written a lot about in the area of marketplaces is you know, so many companies are coming to me and saying, I want to be a marketplace. And, and, and my question back to them is, why should you, why should somebody pick you to be a marketplace? And there's two reasons for that. One would be you have a lot of people that are in your uh, portal looking for you already. So you have an audience, and that's why I would want to be in your marketplace. Or you provide value of some sort in vetting these other businesses, because otherwise, I can just go out there and find anybody's API, and it's not, uh, I don't know whether this is a good API or a bad API, or 
something that's going to you know, rob me or who knows what. So by providing uh, the vetting and onboarding of these APIs and now identifying who's playing in which party here, the corporate customer can consume all these other APIs from these other vendors. And of course, there's a modernization model there as well. So uh, another example of, of uh, API scenario in a marketplace type, type of situation. Uh, IoT example, so innovation. Uh, this is an auto manufacturer uh, tracking uh, behavior and location and all kinds of things in an automobile. So as you're driving around in their cars, they're gathering information from you, potentially selling that information to third parties. Of course, with you know GDPR, we, we, we do good things there. But uh, but other than that, uh, you know we, we can do these kinds of things with opt-in and monetize the, the data and give the customer in the car more value um, from from our automobile. So that's another example. All right, ten more minutes. Yes. All right, so we've got uh, a, a, a quick recap of the seven biggest mistakes. I'm going to tell you what the mistakes are. I'm not going to tell you how to fix them. Uh, that one we can, we can again talk about afterwards. Uh, but I do talk about this uh, in, in a blog, and which is linked there. And I also presented this and it's captured uh, from Amsterdam. First one, uh, poor uh, business API identification, poor uh, confusion between API services and microservices. I have been in the API space for a long time now, and I, I thought this problem might go away, uh, but it has not. I continue to go into companies, and they don't understand what the difference between an API and a service is, or between a service and a microservice. They think it's the same thing with a different name, or um, it, it, it's a uh, you know, smaller service. And, and, and so uh, if you are confused about any of these topics, it's OK. Just read some of the stuff that, that we've got for you, but, but this is a problem. If you can't differentiate what an API is and why it's different than a service or a microservice, that's an important thing to understand before you start to try to put the solution in. And so we can help you with that. Um, second one, no defined project. Uh, I don't know how many companies I go into, they built a bunch of APIs and nobody's using them. Uh, they, the IT group got assigned to do something with APIs by an IT leader and there's no project around it. So having a, a, a kickoff uh, project, maybe not the most complex one, but some project to kind of guide what API you should do and have some kind of success with it is a good thing. You should probably have a couple of projects, uh, I would say, is, is, a, is a good idea. Um, which leads me to the next one, which is no defined strategy. Um, so one of the first questions I will ask if I get into one of the one-on-one -on -one work, one workshops is why are you doing this? And I'm very always interested in hearing the answer to the why are we doing this? Because often it becomes what are you doing and not why are you doing it? And the why should relate probably back to the four business drivers that I spoke about, right? So are you trying to get speed to market? Are you trying to get more customers? Are you trying to make money competitive? Whatever those things are that we talked about, I would hope to hear one of those answers, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, so so that's, uh, that's one of the problems. Lack of business involvement. We don't want to tell the business about this. They're going to ask us for things really quickly if we do. Uh, and, and so we don't want to get the business involved. Now, well, the business involvement is important. If, if you think about the four business drivers, these are business things, right? The business wants speed to market. They want to get more customers. This is how you get funding for the project. So this is how things move forward. And so getting the business involved also will help you with problem number one, identifying good APIs. Because if the APIs are business-oriented APIs, you will help bring value to the business and things will move forward. So a lot of these things are interrelated. Not staffing key roles. Again, related to many of the other ones. Uh, we see many times that companies are starting an API initiative and the first thing they do is tell the API, you're now an API developer. Go develop API. Well, how are they going to know what APIs should be developed? All they know about is the back-end systems that they've been working with and that they integrate together. And so if I don't have some kind of product management type role that's going to understand what does the marketplace want from me and what sh APIs should I be delivering to the market and then when I actually build the APIs, how do I tell the world about the fact that these things exist, I'm not going to be successful. And so without this role, it's just not going to work very well. Shush is the secret. Um, one of my favorites, uh, if, if you do everything else well and you don't tell anybody, <laughs> that you have an API, then nobody's going to use it, right? So you need to get out there, even if it's internal APIs. Uh, 
to the, your own internal developers and market the fact that you've got APIs and tell them why it's better than what they've done before. Uh, humans are creatures of habit. We do what worked for us before. And so if I didn't use APIs before, I'm not gonna just say, oh, there's an API thing, I think I'll use it. I'm gonna go back to what I did before. It worked for me last time. So I need to understand and you need to show me that this is gonna be a quicker way for me to get my job done and, and an easier way for me to get my job done and I'll be more successful. Last one, no metrics, and four metrics. Um, so often what happens is either metrics are not thought about or we just count the things that we can easily count. So uh, how many API users do we have? You know, uh, how many API calls do we have? Is that a meaningful metric? Maybe, <coughs> maybe not. Uh, and, and so deciding whether or not this is important and what's important is, is, uh, is a good thing as well. All right, five minutes to go. One last topic. So this, I ran through fairly quickly. Uh, business drivers, use cases, customer examples, things that people do wrong. The last part is what's next. And so uh, I introduced myself as digital transformation and API business strategist. And digital transformation is the new buzzword that we're seeing everywhere, right? So every company is starting to talk about doing digital transformation. Every analyst on the planet is creating charts like this that show the amount of money that is to be made through digital transformation, and everybody wants to do digital transformation, which then led me to the question, what is digital transformation? <laughs> so, so if you Google what is digital transformation, you will get about a thousand different kits. Um, and there are all different definitions of what digital transformation is. And so I have categorized, categorized these into three types of definitions. Uh, the first definition that I see is all about technology. People say digital transformation is using digital technologies to do these new things, okay? Second definition type is digital transformation is digital technologies and new business models, or new business things that we want to do, okay? Third definition is this. Uh, this is the one I liked, uh, which is the first two parts plus the idea of customer centricity. So it's not, and this is probably the toughest part. It's not about what we do as a company, it's about what the customer is trying to do. And historically businesses, any business, IBM, a bank, a retailer, whoever we are, uh, we talk about what we offer you. I want to come and tell you about my API product. I want to tell you, uh, uh, as a bank, I have accounts. Here are my accounts, here are my loans. Uh, I have, I'm a retailer, I have these products for sale, here are my prices. I tell you what I have to offer you. We have to flip that. What is the customer trying to do? So if we think about this definition, um, in the context of APIs and all the other things that are going on around this, like people moving to cloud, using artificial intelligence to personalize what's going on with people, <coughs> the API stuff that's been happening, digital ecosystems, like we just spoken about in the previous session, um, doing this across multiple companies, the problem becomes, and things like microservices and APIs and doing all these things on the cloud and on-premise with multiple companies, the number of parts that we have to make work together is tough. Right? It's become hard. We have smaller, more, more and smaller parts that need to all work together across multiple companies. And so integration across this digital ecosystem, across digital transformation, could be the bottleneck that kills digital transformation. And it's not just me saying that. Uh, Gartner has written a paper about it, talking about the need for integration uh, and why this might be the, 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 the bottleneck that causes problems for, um, for digital transformation. I don't have the IDC chart in here. There's an IDC chart that talks about this being number one in the uh, you know, things that CIOs are caring about. So digital, uh, the integration is going to be a problem and we need to focus on this in order to be successful. And so, what we started thinking about in IBM is how we make you successful in digital transformation, not just with API or events or any of these other things individually. And so I wish I could say buy my product X and that would do this for you, but this is gonna actually take effort on your side with a people and process change, with a perspective change from that I bring these products to market to I'm trying to satisfy this customer problem that they have or this customer opportunity. So it's people in process, it's architecture, and there is technology involved as well. And so what we think we're thinking about is uh, your environment, 
which we believe will be on-premise and on any number of different clouds, not just IBM's cloud, but Amazon, Azure, Google, you may have things anywhere, probably in many places, and you'll need to connect to things that are in many places. And the connectivity solutions are not gonna just be ABI, I'm sorry to say to the ABI audience, uh, but, but you know, there'll be events, uh, and there's going to be a uh, need for big files to be transferred, and there's going to be a need for uh, transactionality in, in, a, in a messaging type scenario. So lots of different things are going to be put in place to make this successful. And so what we've done to try to make your life simpler is put this all in one thing. So what you can do with IBM now is acquire something we call the Cloud Pack for Integration, which basically, I want to buy integration. And, and so in, in this offering, you get API, you get events, you get application integration, you get file transfer, you get it all, and you buy whatever capacity it is you think you need and you use whichever of those things you want. And the whole idea is just to give you all the tools to do the right thing at the right time when you need it. And so this is our strategy. We still sell individual products, you have to buy individual products, that's fine, uh, but we expect a lot of people will be moving forward uh, with this hybrid uh, uh, approach to integration. It will run anywhere on anybody's cloud, and support all the clouds. And so this is our strategy, this is where we see the market going. Uh, with that, some last uh, recommendations. Executive and business buy-in, absolutely critical. This is a business thing that we're talking about here. This is not just technology. It's an ongoing thing. Establish your strategy and goals, get the roles and responsibilities out there, and do that communication. And with minus one minute to go, I. Uh, We'll leave you with uh, some links. Everything I publish is out on this site on the blog link there. And there, these are the four pages of links. Uh, if I publish something tomorrow, it's going to be off of that top one. Uh, that will give you everything I write. But there's basic stuff here. There's digital business. This is one of the more, more recent ones, overcoming the three largest obstacles in digital transformation. Um, so we'll switch to the next page. Business and value type things. This is what we mostly covered in this session. Uh, so this whole thing will give you a lot more information on what we spoke about uh, from the business drivers, use cases, the seven biggest mistakes, it's all, all on here. And then the last page is architecture, technology, and industry use cases. And you can get all that um, when I post this presentation and from that first link as well. Thank you. You're